All right, good evening, everyone, and a very warm welcome to this CoreLedger webinar. My name is Samuel Miller. I work with the marketing and sales teams here at CoreLedger, and I'll be introducing today's event, which is all about token economies. We thought this would be an interesting topic because they are such a fundamental tool for unlocking blockchain technology and making it useful for business cases. However, there's often misconceptions or confusion around them, especially from those who are new to the industry or are more familiar with cryptocurrency. So today we hope to bring some clarity to the topic of how token economies work and why they're important. For our agenda today, in just a moment, CoreLedger's co-founder and CEO, Johannes Schweifer, will begin by talking about how token economies have given blockchain technology a real purpose and direction. Then he'll discuss why token economies are so important and what they're good for by looking at some use cases. And then finally, we'll talk about what CoreLedger brings to the table with our TOS platform and demonstrate how a token economy works in real time. After that, we'll have some time for discussion. So if you have any questions, comments, or discussion points, you'll see a Q&A button on the left side of your screen. If you just click on that, you can type in your questions, and at the end, we will do our very best to answer them. So that's it for me. I will now pass the mic off to Hannes. So good evening, everyone. Greetings to today's webinar. So my name is Johannes Schweifer. I'm actually a chemist, and I co-founded one of the biggest uh, uh, cryptocurrency broker here in Switzerland in 2013. That's Bitcoin Swiss. And I also co-founded a number of other companies, uh, especially CoreLedger, where we focus on the technology of blockchain in order to bring purpose to the ecosystem. So um, I'm going to talk about exactly that, adding purpose to blockchain with token economies. And um, I will present the tools which we have um, to offer ready to use for implementing such token economy use cases. First of all, um, I already presented in last webinar um, how token economies in general should work. Um, the um, impo most important part is which are business models which are not merely and exclusively about speculation. So uh, there are two flavors. One is business models which do not involve money at all. So blockchain is just used as a tool and powers something different. For example, um, by uh, having a, notar a notarization process built on blockchain, there is no money involved. Okay, except if the not uh, notary service takes money for doing for doing that, but. Uh, Primarily, it's not built around money. And the other side is that if it involves some investment, the investment does some work. What does that mean? Um, revenue share case, for example, as an investor, you spend some money. The money is put to use. So some real estate is built or a farm is being operated. And that object generates real revenue from the operative business and that revenue is shared again to the investors so it's not just coming from other investors no the money is coming from external sources from operative business so in an economy where you create value by using blockchain as a technology you have participants entering and a smaller number of participants uh, leaving the system and basically there is a process which generates value in between. And the other one, um, I already explained, this is operative business bringing money into the system. I just brought that up. It was already part of uh, last week's webinar to um, highlight the differences and highlight, let's say, the key points, how real useful blockchain cases apart from speculation work. So. What examples do we have? So the non-speculative but still financial use cases are, for example, investment ones, crowdfunding, the let's say the spirit of the old ICOs, where money is being put to use in that sense that something of bigger value is being created. Then, of course, um, liquidity, which is revenue share, trade finance, microloans, and all that stuff. Then disintermediation, that's where Money, uh, blockchain is being used in order to replace money or in order to replace actually the intermediary. So that can be remittance or micropayments and a lot of additional examples. And then finally, financial inclusion, making people who are most likely left out of the financial value chain 
um, able to join that and also profit from some of those financial instruments by, for example, fractionalization or using blockchain as a protocol to add banking services. Then using blockchain as a tool comes also in different flavors. The one is permissions, for example, with access tokens. One of our partner companies, Ambitorio, is using this in order to um, distribute the permission to access uh, encrypted files, which are about 3D printing. So 3D printing matrix is being um, transferred in the form of a token. And only if you have such a token, you can use it. Then uh, vouchers, smart locks and all that. Then using blockchain for notarization on the quotes, uh, using the feature of having tamper-proof data on blockchain. That's for storing certificates of education, like master's degrees, PhD degrees, proof of origin, tracking land registry, so also for governmental services. Then, of course, you can use blockchain to substitute money using asset-backed asset tokens, partner economies, social credits. And then, of course, you can implement custom logic by smart contracts, which is enforcement of shareholder agreements, um, having some supply chain logic there, doing voting or implementing insurance contracts. So all these things can be done and many more. The potential of token economies is when we look into the future. So some of those things, and um, we designed uh, that slide two years ago, have already come to pass. Um, some words have changed. For example, um, government cryptocurrencies, now they are known as CBDCs. But basically, the projection proved correct. So we started with public cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and all that, um, having clones of that original protocol. You might remember how Litecoin came to pass. Then we had the startup fundraising, the ICOs. Later came the STOs, which not really worked. The initial exchange offerings, which is just a different word. <laughs> um, creation of financial products and so forth, then access rights, um, smart locks. This is the time now. Government cryptocurrencies, as I said, um, they are now being in intensively studied. And I think no week passes without um, an announcement of one of the central banks um, saying that they are going to study it. Then it all ultimately leads to a situation where blockchain and most um, of all, um, the tokenization functionality of blockchain is being used to power economies. So that's what we call a token economy. And the simplest form of a token economy is by simply using a token as a placeholder for a real item. That can be a service, but that can also be a product. And it works in that form that it's an IOU for a real, real product, a placeholder. And that digitalization can be done with virtually anything. So it can be a commodity, it can be some precious metal, it can be even um, um, real currencies, fiat currencies, like the dollar, which, are, which is digitalized. This ultimately is what CBDCs are about. But uh, I'm talking about the more um, simpler approach by having just a, a stash of asset backing, so real dollars in a bank account, in a vault, somewhere, and issuing a token which grants the holder the right to claim that money. You can um, tokenize something as primitive as a banana. Well, OK, a tokenized banana is not primitive anymore. Nonetheless, it's an IOU. But there um, comes the difficulty to explain what the value is about. And that leads me to the next point. Token economies need more than just a token, just a contract as, a, as usual. You might be familiar with the ERC-20 protocol. That's the standard protocol for tokens. And that's a separate smart contract. And most likely when people tokenize, it's all about just creating such a contract and the lengthy procedure of getting it through regulation or getting um, a no action letter from the regulator. But technology doesn't end with a smart contract. Actually, there it just starts. What you need to do is you have to token, document your token or your digital asset in order to explain what it is about. The banana in the example before, is it the future on the banana? Is it banana stored somewhere? Then it definitely has an expiry date. 
you need to know that. What's about the money? Is it really on a bank account? Is it in a vault? Is it air? Like in the case of some of the already known stable coins. So it's important to define this. Then the second is tokenization. You need to add quantity. You can mint and burn tokens, but you can also do some elaborate tricks like including some interest rates, positive and negative. Then what about storage costs? All that is part of tokenization. In today's world where everything is practically governed by the regulator, you want to add some rules, some form of governance to your digital asset. So that's what we call a so-called controller that needs to be in the one or the other form implemented on chain directly. And the last thing is about value conversion. If you want to seriously work in a token economy, then you always have a conversion between one digital asset and the other digital asset. And here we can also offer a special approach. So um, this is especially important because the projection for business being done on blockchain and its potential economic value is quite high. We are in 2020 and it's uh, estimated to have a value of around uh, 3 billion, but growing very steeply. So already in 2025, we are talking about uh, an amount of 40 billion, um, which is the value of business on blockchain. So what I'm talking about today is modeling business businesses and modeling business cases, which are around tokens and tokenization on our platform, College at Teos. So as an introduction, what Teos is about, it's a token economy operating system consisting of servers, services, protocols, and so forth, which allow to run token economy processes. It runs on blockchain, of course. We have two different blockchains on which it runs. So one of them is the Ethereum mainnet. And then a second one is the Sparknet, which is also Ethereum-based technology, but it comes without gas cost. That's important because many of those recent projects around DeFi and others made transaction costs on the Ethereum mainnet so high that uh, a lot of projects simply were squeezed out of the market and um, became defunct. So Sparknet is one option to run projects at no cost at all. So it consists of servers and services, as I mentioned, can be personalized. It has white labor interfaces, and I'm going to show them today hands on. And it comes with one, well, with a number of, but one I want to mention exp uh, explicitly, one proprietary technology, which is called Token Warps, which has a patent pending uh, on it for enabling complex sequences of digital atomic value conversions. That's a monster sentence. I will explain that in detail. First, um, the product. So on the, the platform built on Teos itself and the Teos SDK, we offer an API projects which need some special UI implementation can directly connect to the API, but that's not really sexy. It's a lot of development work. Coreledger can be used and Teos can be used right away with ready to be to use products, which are the white label marketplace for token lifecycle management, the white label app for um, use as a, as a wallet, or it can also be customized in that sense that uh, the assets can be configured, um, colors and so forth, functionalities can be configured. I'm going to show that in a couple of minutes uh, live. And the last product is the white label portal, which acts as a gateway between the two worlds. One is the, the fiat and crypto world, so this, the, the, the existing environment where you pay with US dollar cash or you pay with Bitcoin, and then the conversion into the token, which is for example, a token placeholder for bananas or a placeholder for US dollars or gold or whatever you want. And the other way around, redemption, giving back the token in exchange for the real value. So the trading, which I just mentioned, explained a little bit more in, in detail. Why is it important and why is it new? 
first of all, if people can tokenize and companies can tokenize whatever they want, regardless whether um, it's regulated or not, leaving just the legal question um, uh, out for the moment. So if everyone can tokenize everything, then we end up at a situation where we have two or more of them of the same asset, having the same face value, having the same denomination, but still being not the same. So in the case of US dollar tokens, um, we already see that there are plenty of them, like 20 US dollar tokens on the Ethereum mainnet already and different other networks. They all have a denomination of US dollar, but they are not the same because they have different issuers and they have different backing. If you want to use such a token for a trade and blockchain is, um, has an exceptional advantage when doing a trade or it's called an atomic swap, because you can be sure that you receive the item which you want in exchange for the item which you give. An atomic swap always grants you that you will never give something without receiving the uh, corresponding item you wanted. But if you do that on blockchain and if the seller, in this case, in this example of the banana token, wants a green dollar, but you have only the red dollar, then you end up having to do two different transactions. Even if they are atomic swaps, conversion of the red dollar into the green dollar, and then the green dollar into the banana, you still have a problem because there is a there is a time in between. Even if it's milliseconds, it's in theory possible that banana uh, tokens are being sold already when your transaction is finally tried to be mined. So you end up having blue uh, green dollars, which you never wanted, and no bananas at all. So what Qualature is doing, Qualature is offering a way to combine two and more atomic transactions into something we call an atomic transaction sequence or the token warp. That means that for the, for the buyer who has red dollars to offer and wants to buy banana tokens, it's a seamless and transparent transaction. He doesn't even see the green dollar in between, just needs one entity, one party to offer a conversion of red dollar into green dollar, and then it works. Combining this logic into a broader sense means that you can, con can convert anything into anything else and thereby even eliminate the need for currencies. You might be familiar with the saying that on Facebook, you need six to seven hops or six to seven connections between people in order to be connected to every person on the world. So um, in, in that analogy, Collager can, can offer the very same. So a connection through a couple of value conversions, for example, banana to dollar, dollar to gold, and so forth, every asset can be connected with every, every asset um, which exists in the entire system. So that allows to practically uh, root values, the values of tokens, in the same way as the internet roots data. So why is it important? Because simply it removes dependency on intermediaries, banks, and other centralized markets. And of course, it can root values much faster than uh, and much more reliable than any other mean could. So there are a lot of business cases and a lot of options for which you can use that. And I'm going to show it live on the system. So the three products which have which we have seen in the slide before are the white labor marketplace. The white labor marketplace has a dashboard which allows you to see which transactions you uh, already signed. It has an overview of assets which you own. You can search for any asset which you want. I'm searching for gold. I have an overview of different assets for gold which have already been issued. I can click on the more info button to see more details about it. I have additional properties. These properties can be as lengthy as the issuer um, wanted them. I can download uh, an asset prospectus which contains everything which is relevant and everything which I also see on the UI. The asset description here um, is embedded into 
um, a template. The template in this case is just empty so that we see the different parameters which are inserted. They can be inserted anywhere in the document. The most important part is it's hashed and timestamped on blockchain. If a block reference, we have a unique ID for the document and we have that lengthy part of code which explains exactly what's inside. So at any time, you can also create new assets by just specifying a new asset name, creating a description, selecting a jurisdiction, defining a type and defining a unit of measure. We can do this together. Uh, let's uh, just create platinum. To Switzerland as the jurisdiction. The type would be commodity and the unit of measure is most likely gram. We have the possibility to select uh, uh, the place of the comma. So in this case, it's, it can be fragmented down to the millionth part. And we can add any kind of definition which we want. For example, more information about the issuer. And so forth. These are custom items which can also be amended whenever needed. We can add governance, which is a so called controller. That's a smart contract which governs the um, permissions to spend and receive and also use for transactions and trade. We can add translations into any language. And of course, we can finally put it on blockchain. So far, it's only locally defined. And in order to activate it, in order to write it on blockchain, we need a transaction. CoreLedger does not store any private keys. So you need a device, or you need some form of key storage, private key storage. And that can be a Ledger Nano hardware device, or it can be one of our apps. For that purpose, for those who don't who are not familiar with how the whole, uh, how such a system works, we have we have uh, uh, just a second. Uh, we have uh, an app which is called Takes Mobile, and Takes Mobile works in the same way as Ledger Nano works. Just a second for screen share. Good. So Takes Mobile has a repository for various addresses, so called wallets, and its private key. It has an overview of transactions. And one of those transactions is the one which I just initiated, which is the activation of an asset. If I confirm the transaction, then I create a new token on blockchain, which is described through the values which I have entered. I can always add new description items. We call the process amendments. And all changes are tracked in an audit trail directly on chain. After I created an asset, I can give it substance. That's the tokenization part when it's about creating creating a value so I can add grams uh, to my asset. So here it exists, it has no, no amounts yet. So units are zero. I have not stored anything yet. So I can create units, for example, store a kilogram or create a kilogram worth of platinum tokens. It doesn't say anything about whether or not those tokens really exist. So we can add, we can link a certificate from an auditor, for example, in order to have some proof. 
So same, same process as before. receive a transaction which I'm going to assign and there it is success now there is a unit allocation I have a thousand grams of tokens or worth of tokens being issued to the pilot issuer address it's possible to go to the marketplace and create offers. Offering, for example, Swiss francs against Bitcoin or something in that very sense, I can go back to my platinum and just offer it on the market, like sell it for something else, for example, for Bitcoin, let's do that, or selling it for Swiss francs. So I have a thousand grams to offer and frankly speaking, I don't know what the current price of platinum is, but it must be in the range of um, 35,000. Again, it's a transaction. The offer is put on the blockchain as a record. So I'm signing it right now. So if, if a user, if somebody who wants to buy this platinum finds it on the marketplace and searches for a way how to buy it, he does not necessarily have to offer it or search it for um, Swiss francs. He can, for example, also use Bitcoins because there is a transaction leading from Bitcoin to whatever it is, US dollars or something which finally connect to the platinum. What Collager is doing, Collager is combining mm -hmm. combining existing eth, uh, assets with uh, or existing supplies into something which I, uh, we call the token warp into an offer. And that offer is just a, an, an, the, the sum of individual trades. I'm not going into detail right now because that's a topic for a webinar um, itself. So let's move on to the next product. Um, all that, or at least most of it, um, which I have shown before, can also be shown and can also be done through the, the White Labor app. The White Labor app is, in, is similar to the uh, Takes Mobile a container for, for private keys explicitly for one private key and it has the ability to also um, scan QR codes in other words to import tokens from for example um, plastic wallets or from from um, paper wallets so it's personalized and that one is an app which quality uh, created for demo purposes. Normally it's branded with our customers' uh, logos and also configured for our customers' purposes. So there's an overview of assets. There is a market where I can do the very same, like um, trading Swiss francs or Bitcoin or whatever for platinum. It also searches for warps and executes them. There's a QR code scanner which can interpret um, various different QR codes. For example, payment requests. So it's also possible to use the app for creating invoices. I can say, I would like to have one ounce of gold from somebody else. 
it creates a QR code. This QR code can be scanned by another white paper app and the payment request is closed. In other words, it's paid. And that's it about the, the white labor app. And finally, the bridge between both worlds, the token world, because the app just can handle token uh, into token conversion. The bridge between both worlds, the real value world where we have the fiat currencies and cryptocurrencies and the tokens is realized through the white labor portal. So here we have the option to purchase tokens. I can just add them to the cart. It works like a web shop. So I'm buying some gold and some core ledger shares. Behind is an, a very simple configuration file where we can put, for example, also the platinum, which I have just created on, on the site. It takes about two minutes maximum of configuration on the refresh, um, provided I have already a picture for it. Um, afterwards, I have a card from which I can simply check out. I have to specify to which target address I want to send the tokens. Let's say I want to send it to a so-called token card. That's a paper wallet. So, okay, it's a plastic wallet, but nonetheless, it has a private key and a public, um, an address printed on it, or I can send it to any of my already registered wallets. I take that one. We have some additional costs. For example, the collection method is not for free. It costs 15 francs and so forth. So it's added in the same way as you're used to through a normal web shop. I can continue and select the method for payout. All these things are configurable. So I select the bank transfer, read some details and confirm everything and submit. And that's it. My user also has the permission to access the backend. Um, the administration functions. So we have purchase management and here my transaction appears. As an admin, I'm now waiting for the payment to arrive and modify the status. I can edit the wallet address and set the final address to which the tokens are, are to be sent because I, as a selling company, of course, um, sell the plastic card, the plastic carrier, so I know the address. And afterwards, the corresponding tokens are sent to that address. It also features the redemption process, which is conversion of tokens into real values that could be redeemed by a bank transfer or cryptocurrencies. And that, in that case, in this configuration, it's a Bitcoin redemption or Ethereum or even a physical redemption. If it's about um, purchasing gold, uh, then I could say, I give back the gold tokens and I receive the gold in physical shape and in, in, a, in, a, in a delivery by DHL or some security transport or whatever. That's a potential use case. The portal um, also offers the feature to um, create and maintain an account. So having the possibility to enter bank accounts, crypto wallets and all that, and to do KYC. Also for this process, for the KYC, there is a backend where I can set the status of my users as an admin and approve them or not. So that is a very condensed information in a very short time. We are going to cover all these different products and topics in follow-up webinars. So there is a detailed one about creating assets, another one how about to run and create trades on Core Ledger's Theos and how, uh, how, to con how to use and configure white label app and white label portal. So I hope the information which was presented was not too overwhelming. So thank you very much for, the, um, for your patience and uh, for attending the webinar. And I think now we have some questions. Yeah, we have just a few moments left for questions. So I'll jump right in. Um, first up, what other purposes can a token have besides just being a placeholder for a real object or a service? Um, well, uh, the token can be a document, for example. So you can tokenize the information um, of uh, an audit company that um, the gold or the, the bananas or whatever it is are really there. So um, 
you use basically the blockchain and the feature that every item which is um, docu or which is digitalized has its own unique ID. And whether or not you tokenize it, in other words, give you quantity is your decision. A document does not need um, does not need quantity unless, of course, it's um, it's on Ambitorio's solution where you could encrypt the document and then offer it for sale. And then you need some some tokens for it. But that's uh, a classical non-financial product use case or a classical non-physical object use case. All right, next question. Can I create any asset? What about regulations? You can technically, of course, create any asset, whatever you want, um, but you have to care about uh, regulatory restrictions yourself. So Corledger is not going to take care of that. Uh, you have to clarify it with your own regulatory authority and um, get white labeling and uh, not white labeling, get, um, get it approved. In a, in a similar vein, we have another question about this. How do you manage uh, custodian requirements? Um, Corledger does not store, as I've said, um, any any assets or any private keys, except, of course, for the administration keys. So um, it's about um, the responsibility of every custodian to um, make sure that his process and his storage safety is, is intact. Um, we use the standard Ethereum uh, protocol for signing transactions. In other words, it's standard Ethereum keys which are to be kept. And there are already a number of custodians who uh, can follow and implement that protocol. So um, our own uh, the only requirements which we needed was to make sure that we are Ethereum compatible, which we are, and everything else is up to the custodians. Okay, next question. How generic can a tokenization infrastructure be? Do you claim to be able to basically run all use cases for tokens? Well, there is no magic. So if you have one infrastructure, then it will for sure not fit 100% of all use cases. For such cases, um, we implemented it in a, as, as generic as possible way with tools which can easily be adapted. So from the three tools which I have shown, the white labor app and the white labor portal, those which are the closest um, to the to the end user, in other words, these are the end user tools, those can easily be adapted. We have um, software partners who do that job. Um, at the moment, we have four of them um, in negotiation with a fifth, and they can use the SDK and adapt it. So in, in other words, if your business process um, is can can run on the products as they are so off from the shelf then it's fine if they don't then it's possible to just adapt the existing product with uh, the least possible effort but of course also then uh, it will not uh, fulfill the need of 100 percent of all possible tokenization use cases it just can't all right, thank you. So I think that's all the time we have for questions today. Um, but if you do have any more questions or if you'd like to get in touch with us to discuss anything, uh, you can do so quite easily through our websites. You can also find us uh, on social media. So please do follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and also at Medium, where we post monthly articles on the topics of blockchain and tokenization. We're also on YouTube, where you'll find a recording of this webinar in case you want to refer back. Uh, as well as to past webinars. Um, again, if you want to discuss anything with us or get in touch, um, you can do so very easily through our website. So thanks again, everyone, for joining us, and we hope to see you again at a future webinar.